Freddy, Jason, Leatherface, Michael Myers, and Pinhead. These icons of the modern age of horror have become their own mythology. They seem to have been around forever, and each of them have something that have kept them alive and kicking, well, sort of, for decades, for horror fans alike. They're the big guys, the big guns. Robert England, Kane Hodder, Gunnar Hansen, Doug Bradley, and Nick Castle are names that have become forever associated with the legends they've helped to make. When something like this happens right before your eyes, and you see a new entry into the list, that's a rare opportunity. Over the last few years, we've seen that very thing happen thanks to a very creepy clown and a very tiny hat. David Howard Thornton took over the role of Art the Clown in the feature film Terrifier and has since built himself into one of the new favorites of the horror landscape. So don't you dare split! because we're going to find out all about what happened to David Howard Thornton, and we're going to do so with the man himself, because as it turns out, as silent as art is, the man behind the clown loves to talk. David Howard Thornton was born on November 30th, 1979 in Alabama. David grew up with an abiding love of movies, comics, video games, and cartoons. This fed into a natural ability to just be entertaining and make people laugh, even in elementary school. Growing up, David had to deal with bullying, which, as we've seen, seems to be a trend with a lot of our favorite horror legends and many of us horror fans. But David persevered, and during a school play in junior high, saved the day when a set decided to collapse during Mickey's Christmas Carol. David began improvising on stage and kept the audience entertained while things were being fixed. He realized in that moment the power of being able to move a crowd. But David didn't immediately begin his career as an actor, but went into teaching instead. Sadly, the loss of his mother would be what motivated David into acting after always dreaming about it for years. The lesson of always take the chance while you can led David to start working in theater productions, eventually leading him to actually quit teaching completely and move to New York City. New York City led to David getting into musicals. The irony of this is not lost on anyone. David is not only a man of a thousand faces when it comes to horror monsters, but also voices. He can do a spot-on Joker from Batman the Animated Series. You see, it doesn't matter if you catch me and throw me back into the asylum. And I mean, psychotic clowns, anyone? But it's more than that. The physical and theatrical nature of musicals and stage performing, along with what David had grown up watching and mimicking, gave him some killer skills. Between working on stage, and no joke, he was in fact in the touring production of How the Grinch Stole Christmas, David started working doing voice work for video games and animated productions. Then in 2016, he landed the role that would change his trajectory forever. Terrifier was a down and dirty independent movie from Damien Leone, who wrote, directed, edited, and produced the film. Continuing the story of Art the Clown from the anthology All Hallows' Eve, released a few years earlier, this was the first time David would play the gore-loving psycho in the little hat. Shot on a budget of just $35,000, Terrifier became a cult classic with a visual and story style that harkened back to the 80s slashics we all loved, but with a meaner, more modern sensibility. Art didn't play by the rules at all, and neither did that movie. Leon used the film to showcase his special effects work with practical effects. These were very well done and very disturbing. And so was art. David Howard Thornton doesn't speak one line of dialogue, which would be hard to do with those teeth. And with just his face and movements and eyes, that can go from playful, pissed off, manic, and all points in between, gave a tour de force performance that walked right out of a nightmare. Almost immediately, Art the Clown became the talk of the horror town. Talk of terrifiers spread like wildfire, and it quickly became a cult phenomenon. Art, well, art started springing up on t-shirts, prints, and human skin. That same year, David would become a yet another psychotic clown for the fan series Nightwing Escalation, which you can find on YouTube, as one of his favorite comic book villains, the Joker. The following year, he'd be a part of the Western audio drama Powderburns, with a cast that included The Flash himself, John Wesley Shipp, and Ed Asner, as well as an appearance on the Batman-centered series Gotham. Over the next few years, David made multiple appearances at horror conventions, signing autographs alongside Damien Leone, and giving fans some creepy magic. At some of these, he'd even show up in costume as art for photo ops. But there was always one question on everyone's mind. When were we getting Terrifier 2? 
Well, that answer came in 2019, when Terrifier 2 was announced. The film had an Indiegogo campaign that blew away its initial goal of 50000 with a whopping quarter million dollars at the end of its push. Luckily, most of the film was shot before COVID hit, but the quarantine of 2020 caused filming to have to be stopped. We'll find out that that quarantine would be the reason we have one of the most gut-wrenching scenes in Terrifier 2 to be created in a bit. Terrifier 2 would be a love letter to the crazy 80s supernatural slashers of old, starting nearly immediately after the ending of the first film and including a new creepy character and buddy for art in the form of the unnerving, unnerving, little pale girl. Art would also be introduced to his equal in the heroic Sienna, who has to save her brother Jonathan from literally being devoured by the killer clown. The sequel surprised everyone in the world of entertainment with how it eviscerated the box office, but to horror fans, it wasn't as much of a shock as we'd all been waiting for this flick and were rooting on Art and company. With a budget of $250,000, Terrifier 2 grossed $12 million at the theater, showing the world what a down and dirty independent horror film could be. Terrifier 2 got press in major outlets and the mainstream, with Jerry O'Connell praising the film on the talk and the PR team for the movie. But it turns out it was not a PR stunt when it came to people barfing up their guts during screenings. That actually happened. You all really need to be more kind to your local theater workers. Hot on the heels of Terrifier 2, David Howard Thornton has yet another horror flick to ring in the new year and horror day season with The Mean One. Hidden once again under a lot of makeup and prosthetics, this time all green, The Mean One is a horror parody in the style of Dr. Seuss's famous Grinch. But instead of being just a vandalizing thief, this mean one will happily slice you to ribbons and I don't mean the kind to wrap gifts. The film, much like Terrifier 2, has made waves massively bloody ones, online and in the press, having grossed close to half a million dollars in limited release already. It's pretty clear that David Howard Thornton has found his calling. I liken his performance as art and even the mean one to a sort of return to the silent film era. Underneath all those prosthetics, you have to work hard to bring that character to life, or death I guess, and he does it with panache. Which is funny, cause David Howard Thornton is great to talk to, something you're about to get to see. Without further ado, here's the man himself to talk about his art. That's a pun. Well, David, thank you so much for joining me here on um, what happened to our favorite horror celebrities. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, we all know what's happened to you. You've blown up. It's been crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I like this. This past week, I have I had one of the craziest weeks of my life in a great way because. I had a premiere in LA for the mean one. I did a whole, um, uh, like, uh, God, what was it? Uh, a Q and a session with Kevin Smith over zoom because I was still in LA while everybody else was there in New Jersey. <laughs> and then I, I filmed a cameo for a, uh, I can't say what project it was, but with some big names yesterday for a certain, uh, bird network. So, Ooh. yeah, so I was like, holy crap, what's going on? And then Pete Davidson just asked me to a basketball game next week. So I'm like, what? Oh, my God, it's fantastic. So this is insane. This is insane. I'm like, is this real? Like, Damien and I are both like, what, 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 is this real life right now? <laughs> Well, I think I think that um, and this is just me personally after, you know, I've I've watched you grow and I've been, you know, on Team David for the whole time because you Thank are you. fantastically talented. <laughs> you you're great. And you're a good person and um, you deserve all the success. But I think part of the reason that you've hit so well was with what you did with art. And you've probably heard this before, but it was like a perfect meshing of old school you know horror meeting the just a new more visceral in your face um you know modern age but you did it with such a panache and and also the um just an old school vibe in terms of the independent way it was done so you guys just nailed it uh, in more ways than one i think art, <laughs> art probably use nails <laughs> yeah it's it's i i don't know it's just I just do what I do. I just, <laughs> I just, I just hope for the best. I, I have fun with what I do, and 
just whatever happens happens you know <laughs> well and so i wanted to ask you um because i know that you're a fellow uh you know you're a fellow comic book guy you're a fellow mm -hmm. horror nerd you you you're as, as big a fan as we all are what when you were younger um what really grabbed you and made you want to be an actor and to get into this sort of work oh god um i, I think the thing that really really grabbed me was seeing uh who framed roger rabbit and the behind the scenes special they did on tv because i that was the first time i really saw how movies were made and i was like that's when i learned about mel blank being the voice for all the looney tune characters and stuff like that it just i, I saw so much in that special like you know and it just really grabbed me i was like god that seems like a lot of fun but you know even then i was like i don't know if i could ever make this career or anything like that you know i, I want to be a veterinarian for a while then i want to be a chemical engineer then i actually went to college to be a teacher and it, it wasn't until like um, my mom passed away from cancer that it, it changed my whole perspective while i was in college and I was doing story time with my children one day, doing all my little silly voices and stuff like that. And that's when it hit me that, you know, I was getting more enjoyment out of actually entertaining my students than teaching them. I'm like, this is what I really need to be doing with my life. I need, I'm an entertainer. I am not, a, I, I can, I can still teach, you know, in my own way, but I'm an entertainer and this is what fills me. And I, that's when I said, okay, I'm going to move to New York and, give this a shot life's too short not to at least try and Amen. here i am now <laughs> see it paid off and you know the thing that strikes me with your performances in films um and just you know seeing you do uh, and and everybody needs to go see and watch your the youtube video of your uh, monologue as the joker that's like required <laughs> i have told everyone about that and so Thank again you. i'm telling everybody again also dc this guy <laughs> james gunn please cast me as joker <laughs> i'll do it right for once <laughs> yes um I'll but, put a <laughs> smile on your face how about that <laughs> that makes me so happy um but is the physicality and the voices that you're able to do you've kind of mastered both and i was curious about how you know what your training was like for that because mm -hmm. i want to say and i i could be ma making this up you almost look like you've taken mimes mime classes almost for what you do <laughs> it's actually the exact opposite um wow <laughs> i i never really was professionally trained i just learned from observing and doing i i didn't go to school for acting I, I i've taken a few acting classes here in new york but i did those more to just meet casting directors uh, I, I i i hate to say it, i didn't really learn anything through those classes because i had already learned all that stuff just doing it on stage and being in productions with more talented actors that i could learn from and like a great example of that is like the best teacher I probably ever had was um, my five years on tour with How the Grinch Stole Christmas the Musical. I was lucky enough to be Stefan Carl's understudy for the Grinch. And for those that don't know, Stefan Carl was Robbie Rotten on the show Lazy Town. And Stefan was actually trained in physical comedy and miming. And so, so he, he was able to take everything I had been learning how to do all those years I was doing community theater and whatnot and just go, okay, this is how you make this better and fine tune everything. And I put so much of that into my performance of art, everything I learned from him. Nice. Well, yeah. and well, one thing, because you, what i watched and it kind of that what you just said makes sense because as i mm -hmm. i watched terrifier and um i watched terrifier 2 and how you've created art um specifically and and, and other you know with the mean one as well you're almost like a silent film actor because you're mm -hmm. having to use your body and your expressions and i think that's also really interesting because it you know and i I don't want to focus just on art, but that's what most people know you as, right. but you, with that character, you don't have like with Jason and, and, and Michael Myers, they are mask. There's nothing right. there. Freddie 
he just has the wit and the face and the, the, the talking but you you have a face but you don't use your voice you just use the expressions and that's pretty that's hard <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it's, it's one of those things that's just i guess naturally come to me um first of all it's like i i grew up watching those great silent film actors and great physical comedians you know from keaton to rowan atkinson doug jones jim carrey all that those are the guys i you know just i basically idolized and would mimic all the time like even like peter sellers too you know there, there, there's so much great physical comedy and it seems like that's more like of a dying art form these days and i, I hate that and i I think it's kind of cool. I get to bring it back in a different way. It's like yeah. in horror films of all things, you know, <laughs> bring back some kind of, you know, silent film era comedy. And it's just, it's been fun. I, it's, it's kind of a dream of mine. Cause I like, I, I especially like Mr. Bean, I was a huge Mr. Bean fan. And I, that's where I, I would watch his videos over and over and over. And I'm surprised I didn't wear out the tapes. <laughs> But I, I love that style of acting. I love that kind of character, that mischievous character that's just always messing with people. Now that you've told me that Mr. B, now I see it, which yeah. is bizarre. As I, I think back on these scenes of, of art, just going, you know, like, yeah. oh God, yeah, it's Mr. Bean with issues. <laughs> yeah, a lot of issues, a lot of issues. But I also had an epiphany this summer too, when I was at a family uh, reunion at my cousin's wedding. I, I I realized where a lot of this also came from a lot of my facial expressions. It, it comes from having a deaf aunt. My because I I never really I, I learned some sign language growing up, but my aunt lip reads so very well. So even though a lot of my family members you know interact with her with signs, it's I would do a little bit of the signs, but I would more interact just with broad gestures and facial expressions because that's how she would react and interact with us as well. And and I never I never put that together until I was having a conversation with her at the wedding this summer. And I'm like, oh my God, this is where it all comes from. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> this is that's where amazing. it all started. I'm like, because everything's much bigger. And it's, <laughs> it's, like, it's like, oh, wow. It's... <laughs> That's hilarious. Because I mean, she was a big part of my life growing up. Because you know, she lived in the same hometown. She was always over at the house. You know, she was babysitting me all the time. And you know, of course, of course, that, that makes that makes sense. Um, yeah. So, one time we, I, I'd interviewed you previously, and you told me something that just literally destroyed me, and I almost died laughing. And that mm -hmm. was, I asked you, what was the inner voice of art oh and, yeah and and you told me it was this posh british accent <laughs> and now as you talking about mr bean i'm like okay <laughs> oh yeah yeah it's like I, I just think it's funny it's a funny juxtaposition because he's doing these horrible things but he's just got this very you know posh uppity accent hey my goodness gracious me what are we doing here? Uh, hold on there a second sir let me get your change for you oh, don't tell me to get out of here <laughs> calm the fuck down i got a bash from the head with this bomb now see what you made me do now i have to stab it in your eye Look at <laughs> oh, no. don't, don't, don't be screaming don't, 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 shut up i'm gonna cut off your bloody head oh, <laughs> just wanted to horn for god's sake i was just having fun Yes. <laughs> I didn't mean I didn't really want to go in here and something will happen, but what happened? It made me do bad things. I just wanted the horn. Now I've ruined everyone's experience of watching <laughs> Terrifier 2. <laughs> this is what's oh going on. Oh, I think I just That's, Basil like, Faulty is yes. voice. What are you doing? He ceases to be. <laughs> Said, you gave me a dead shopkeeper. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so um, with that, so we, we kind of talked about your first experiences with um with the horror genre. Mm -hmm. I was curious because we've talked about, you know, the the goal is to get you to be the Joker because it needs to happen. Yes, um, I was obviously. curious about how you <laughs> 
how you became, um, you know, what was your first brush with comics? My first brush with comics, like comedy or just comics in general, like stand up comics? Comic books. <laughs> oh, comic books. Oh, there's some, because I have a funny story about yes. brushes with comics. Let me do that. Like, oh, do that, please. Yeah, because I, I don't know if y'all can see it, but on, on screen, I had this, I have these scars on my right arm. Like here, <laughs> Let I me have tell one you, on I other got side. these scars. <laughs> yeah, and I have this other scar here where a bone came out. I, I was, but it goes back to when I was 14 years old. It yeah. is the first day of Christmas break in my freshman year in high school. And my parents for my birthday a few weeks earlier had got me tickets to see Gallagher, the comedian, who, you know, um, just recently passed away. Passed away. Apparently yeah. just batshit crazy later on in life. <laughs> but a man with a sledgehammer that destroys yeah, melons. Imagine mm. that. Yeah. I guess so much different back then. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> but I, I, he, he called me on stage to do the sledgematic routine with him. And I was helping him out putting all the different plates. And I was supposed to go around this uh, watermelon that was supposed to look like a, a, a Native American or something. It was, it was weird. I don't know. It was like, yeah. <laughs> But when there's I, I just, no no yeah no precursor of him being a batshit crazy person. I, I i don't know it's like yeah now now i see it when i look back in hindsight but you know it's like but i i slipped and fell on marbles from a previous act that he did and broke my arm i had a compound fracture on my arm and so that was my first real brush with a celebrity well not my first brush with celebrities but like my first brush with like a, a real comic and stuff like that so <laughs> yeah so that's it made me famous so that's when people stopped bullying me in high school They're like oh my god you're cool you know someone famous because yeah, i almost died on stage <laughs> yeah yeah i literally had to break an arm oh on stage in front of hundreds of people to catch the, this, a break this in story high school has so many references let me tell you how i got these scars <laughs> yeah you want to know how i got these scars fucking gallagher <sighs> Oh God, that, that's the sound bite right there. Yeah. <laughs> fucking just, Gallagher. Fucking Gallagher. Oh, oh shoot. Oh my God. Just, yeah, yeah, but you know, my first brush with celebrity was uh um John Denver of all people. I I, I was uh, in our church choir, our youth choir, well, like kids choir at the time. He came in my third grade year and did a show in Huntsville and he wanted a bunch of kids to sing with him for his Christmas concert on stage. And we got to sing with him. And I actually taught him a silent night in sign language. So we all performed it on stage with him and stuff oh like that. Gosh. So yeah, that, that was my first brush with celebrities. He was, he was such a cool dude. Such That's a cool amazing. Dude. Yeah. This is cool. great. <laughs> oh yeah. We, we also signed uh, this big poster of, of the space shuttle because he was obsessed with NASA and the space program. And my dad worked for NASA at the time. And so he got wow. some, all of us to sign and got a few astronauts to sign it as well and stuff oh, like that's that. That's amazing. Yeah. I, I, yeah but, John, John Denver is another one that had like a renaissance lately with, mm -hmm. with just smoke, you know, uh, Rocky Mountain High, everybody yeah. loving that song. Yeah. Um, but, but going back to your original question. Yeah. <laughs> as we uh, veer off on the tangent. <laughs> yeah. Total to comics. See, that's where my brain was going comedy and comics, but yeah, comic books. Um, I, 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 that was like an early thing with me is, I mean, I was, I was reading, not even just comic books. I was reading like one of the first things I was really trying to learn how to read were the Sunday morning comics uh, in the newspaper. Uh, I wanted to learn those. And, but um, I, 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 once I could actually start reading, I, I started reading comic books and stuff like that too, especially Batman and Spider-Man. I love both those. And also Superman, especially like when uh, the death and return of Superman, that whole Story oh man, arc I happened. remember I, when that happened. Oh man, I, I I remember waiting in line at the comic book store with a huge line of people in Huntsville, Alabama, for that comic to come out, The Death of Superman. That was a big deal. Had that the, black, the black, the black cover. Slip. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. The red, yeah, the all bloody and. Oh no. yeah, I'll never forget that. Boy, we all got played hard, didn't we? <laughs> oh yeah, but still, what an awesome experience that was. Because that was an epic storyline. It that, was. That the only one they've ever done it right was with the DC animated films a few years ago where they did the death. And that was actually, that was well done. But like live action, they. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you though, the, the, I, these, it's interesting to me. And I always say this Marvel, it's the flip. The, the animated mm -hmm. Marvel movies are not good. The live action no. are great. And the, yeah. the live action DC movies are hit or miss but the animated man they are 
God. they are great. It's like, why don't they get the same writers from the animated movies to do the live action <laughs> movies? I mean, that's all they need to do. I seriously, get and they Paul need to do. They need to write a freaking script. They <laughs> need to do a actual House of Mystery, House of Secrets, like a Justice League Dark, and make it happen with Guillermo del Toro. That's oh that's what God. I'm saying. God, Can you yeah. imagine? Oh my God. Oh, that would be fun. Oh, I, I, I also I, know, like, I, I think I remember a few years ago, Kevin Smith was even wanting to do some, like, horror movie version of, like, something with Batman, like Arkham Asylum type thing. I, I, I have talked to people, and my goal is Red Rain, the Dracula versus Batman comic. That, Ooh, that was yeah. so awesome. Yeah. And if they could do that live action, oh, yeah. and R rated, yeah. oh, mm-hmm. that would be great. I also want to do the whole death of the family story arc as well is just because that that really gets I mean that's where they they set up the whole thing with Harley finally breaking away from Joker and going fuck you to him oh yeah also delves deep into the relationship between Batman and Joker it's just like that's such epic storyline and it's just it's so it, it's character just... driven so good I mean that I, yeah. I actually bought the hardback edition of that too because yeah. it just the the gra- the artwork and on the story was just so great for that and it mm-hmm. it really does cross over into the horror genre for Batman because oh, you've God, got yeah. a man ripping his own face off you've yeah got, just I mean I don't know what more you could want with oh, and that's so just, good and it so goes good. into their whole history it goes yeah. into you know it's like it goes to the their first encounter and how you know how he thinks Batman has become weak because of the rest of the Bat family. That's why he wants to get rid of the Bat family because he's tired of Batman being weak. He wants him, he, he needs him to be at his best. Yeah, it's just like, there's you complete there's so many type levels. of thing. It's just like, oh my God, there's just so much meat to that story that I would love to get into. And and if you get like a visually with like the stuff they're doing right now, um that they just did with the Batman with that dark gothic gritty you know it's it, there's almost yeah. a realism to it but then there's a slight off of reality it just yeah, mm, yeah. So so that, that's what bothered me about you know their version of the joker and that it just seemed like they were trying to be way too creepy with it like everybody's trying to do like the heath ledger joker now and i'm like yeah i loved heath ledger's performance but he wasn't the joker of the comic books right the, the joker it, of the comic is is he's a clown but he's a yeah, twisted he, clown He's a clown and he's a showman. And that's what they, for, you know, that's what these live action versions keep forgetting. They try to get creepier and creepier and creepier with him. I'm like, no, Joker's not trying to be creepy. He's a showman. He's a master wordsmith. He's, he's, a, he's a criminal mastermind. He's a freaking genius. He's going to sell know, you on something. He's yeah. selling himself to you. Yeah. And that's his thing. He's, he's, he makes sense. He makes yeah, like, perfect sense. Barely he does. It's like he he's and that's the thing. It's like people are always like he's insane. Like, no, he's not insane. He's actually super sane. He sees things on a totally different level. He's 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 experienced so much bad shit in his life that finally made him snap, where he's like, he sees the sick, awful joke life really is. And he's like, well, you know, if this is how the world really is like there basically there's no god controlling all of this it's like this is just pure chaos the, the the universe is just chaos incarnate let's fucking embrace it and have fun <laughs> it is like that's that's, that's, that's what movie. i love about him yeah yeah i mean that's that is perfect well i know i should i i'm about to lose you but i had one more question for you and and uh, it, we're going to go back to, to again, we're going to go back to art just because I, it's such a big deal to see, you know, I was, when Jason came along, when Freddie came along, and especially before, you know, when Michael Myers came along, mm-hmm. they became icons over time. Um, but I, you know, I don't think I, I, I was so, I was young enough when Freddie came out that I don't think I was aware of being able to watch his progression and how that iconery that's a word came but i get to see it with art you've created this new icon i mean you have masks you have fan art people are getting you tattooed on them um you have fangirls and 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 we know this because i've yeah. seen you know, uh and that's a little odd 
<laughs> for that specific character. <laughs> now you're a perfectly lovely That's man. That's the craziest thing to me is like how many like you know <laughs> men and women both are like, oh my god, art is so sexy. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Have you seen those teeth? Have you seen the poop? <laughs> Have you seen the poop? Have you seen it? it look at the guy. He's gaunt and you know he's very demonic looking. You think that's sexy? God, I wish I had known this back in high school. <laughs> but but my my thought is here. We're getting to see a horror icon be, become, and you're making this. This is you have you and Damien, but you're underneath all of that, and you've brought these mannerisms. How is it for you to watch and be become part of horror history? Hey, it's been surreal because i mean it's still been like you know for 40 years now yeah four years since like four and a half years since terrifier one came out and i'm like it's still not sinking in yet it's just this i i, I don't really think i've had enough time to just actually just sit back and try to digest it all especially since terrifier 2 came out it's just been constantly one thing after another after another after another Every, it's like it seems like every week there's something else that happens it's like my god it's just it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger with people it's yeah just, and it's it's so just cool. it's everywhere it's it's yeah. it's everywhere uh you know my thought was i'm like well I, and we keep talking about comic books but i would love to see a terrifier comic like an actual series happen mm -hmm. about you know with just either art hosting it somehow <laughs> and, or just you know it I, it just lends itself visually and yeah. i can see where all of that kind of comes where your inspirations have come from and go in there mm -hmm. it, when when you're him well there's you know, there's always possibilities for that you know i i, I think that would be a good way to explain things between probably terrifier 2 and terrifier 3 which is happening there's, yeah there's, that's that is happening damien started writing it recently so i mean of course there's going to have to be some kind of time jump between those two movies because you know we we look at elliot fulham who plays jonathan like he's definitely going to age <laughs> but he's like he's sprouted already yeah yeah so we're going to have to like there's going to have to be a time jump in there so it's just like yeah it's like you it's a, but that, i think that would be a cool way to explain you know what happened between that time period also go into sienna as well right what's been going on with her and jonathan during that time period i mean i i don't know what all damien has cooked up for part three yet i have a few ideas but he's keeping a lot of stuff close to the vest right now because he wants to surprise all of us when he releases the script i, I mean everybody was just blown away by this movie and and vomiting apparently yeah <laughs> good job. Yeah, I, I i even saw something like um in italy someone sent me from italy that they they a, some some um movie theater accidentally was so it was supposed to be a screening for some movie for kids and they accidentally screened terrifier 2 <laughs> all these kids i'm like oh no <laughs> good job <laughs> and it starts off it starts off just with just blood everywhere i'm like oh my god that's amazing. I, I, you, come on, come on, what is going on? No, you've just given that clanophobia to like an entire. Oh, yeah, I love it. It's good job. So many mental issues now because of me. You've made little children cry. Oh, you, I know. you can retire. Yeah, I, I've made grown men cry. That's the funny thing. I've, I've been at some of these screenings, I've, I've heard people just reacting, and it's just. I've had actually people vouch for like um, someone I, I met this past weekend and was working at a movie theater and they had to clean up after people that had puked during the movie. Oh my God. And I'm like, oh my, so this is real. What people have been nice. you know, posting Don't about. Don't tell the those... theater workers who you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh my God. It's just like, this is crazy. Is He's like, yeah. I was like, this guy's like, I actually had to clean up after a few people during some of the screenings of Terrifier because you know, people were losing their lunch over some of the scenes. I'm like, that's insane. And that's what I think has been so fascinating about this whole thing. It's like, I, I know that, you know, because it, it snowballed so quickly because we're supposed to just be in theaters for three days right. and a lim very limited run. And it was just the demand got out there because 
everybody's tweeting about this movie after they went to go see it and to snowball to snowball and then, then they start talking about us and all these big you know tv network programs and howard stern and stuff like that and and they were all saying oh you know like i like jerry o'connell on on talk was just like yeah whoever is their publicity person is a freaking genius i'm like it wasn't anybody this was all <laughs> purely organic this is real stuff the this is real vomit just, <laughs> this is real this is real i'm like like someone sent us a video of this guy that's basically having a seizure during the middle of the movie <laughs> and i'm like my god this is it because you, you you don't hear about these things happening in movies anymore no like, this is like william castle level of of, mm -hmm. of gimmickry but it's not a gimmick yeah it's not a gimmick this is just real reactions it's like and i guess it's because people have gotten so just you know everything everything with horror films kind of got safe or so it got safe it got way safe so saccharine i mean I, I hate to say it i looked at some of the, the kills and halloween ends and it was just like they were just so blase the dj the dj was brutal yeah, but that was also cg yeah like crazy. exactly and then the, you have uh, Diana's, you know, kill happens basically off screen and blurred out. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? That's like, yeah, it's, this is the stuff. Yeah, like, if we had done that DJ kill, we would have actually used all practical effects for that. That would, and we would have found a way to make the, the jaw fall off, and tongue fall, all that kind of stuff. That's part of the the beauty of yeah. these movies too. Is I freaking love practical effects and me too holy shit you yeah. guys are just gnarly as hell <laughs> yeah yeah i mean when i saw the the first one in the in the slice in half that happened that that scene yeah. i'm just okay they've they've won yeah <laughs> this yeah. is this if they keep doing this kind of this is <laughs> nope and then we <laughs> then we had Allie's kill in part two which is like that's all because of COVID because Damien was like, I have all this time right now to really make prosthetics. So I'm going to go back to the drawing board and really just go crazy with the scene because I got all this extra time now. That's well, the a COVID. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the, probably the one good thing that came out of COVID. I think. Is, yeah. Is yeah that movie is just, it's just so twisted. And yeah. I, I just, yeah, you guys did great. And you, you. Uh, you deserve all of what you're getting. You are, Thank um, you. you're amazing dude. And, very talented and you've created a new icon and and uh you're just gonna keep blowing up man I, I, you I, I hope so i hope so i mean I, of course i would love to branch out into other things that's than just hard i really want to get back into doing comedy yeah i mean i i would like to see you without makeup that yeah, that would be yeah. fantastic i, I want to do maybe some just a little clown makeup yeah, just yeah. a little white little green yeah. hair be fine <laughs> i would love to do some kind of like jerry lewis you know peter <laughs> sellers type of screwball comedy or something like that just... see that would be amazing because i would love to see i, I was uh, i miss those kind of movies because we mm -hmm. we don't really have those kind anymore no there's a, there aren't a lot of good comedies anymore and that's what's so sad is i mean let's see I, I did see the movie uh, Bullet Train recently. That had some good comedy amazing. in it. That was good. I'm like, ah, see, that's good. I want more of this kind of, I want people having fun again with movies. I, it seems like people forgot to have fun. Yeah, the, um, Bullet Train surprised the hell out of me because I went into yeah. that movie blind. Yeah, and, same here. And I didn't know what to expect from it. And it was one of those um, ensemble movies mm -hmm. that, just was a fun ensemble film you know look yeah. at and and that's kind of what i'm missing like it's a mad 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 world and yes kind of oh my god i would love to do a movie like it's a mad 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 world or like rat race or something or cannonball i mean cannonball, cannonball run all remember that. when oh they did this we sound so old right now oh i'm I sorry know. everybody <laughs> but no it, it, it seriously go back and watch these movies and i love when people complain about length of movies it's a mad 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 world it's like a the hour hours. movie yeah and it's wonderful yeah. <laughs> i see i don't complain about movie link because it's you know i'm here to be entertained and if you can entertain yeah. me and keep me in, engaged make it as long as you want yeah. oh my but, god but yeah everybody you sorry that i know yeah. jump low horror but trust us <laughs> it's all connected it's, it's all, all connected, connected.
Because it's, it's that stuff, like it's a Mad Mad World that kind of inspired Art the Clown. Exactly. It's 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 yeah. like six degrees of Kevin Bacon, but yeah, but not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now we need to do is it's a Mad 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 World with a horror movie. There we go. Oh my gosh. Oh, how would we do that? <laughs> oh my god, that would be so much fun. Just we some, need to just get like, all the old school 80s icons and yeah. like have Tom Atkins in there and just bring yeah. them all together, stick them on an like island. Just some really good horror comedy. Like get like the writers from like uh, Tucker and Dale involved with it. You yes. know, like because that is that damn, that's a good horror comedy. Uh, it's it is uh, Alan Tudyk and and oh. Tyler are just freaking. Oh God, that movies. They're supposed to be making another one of those, by the way. Oh, I hope so. I I want to be in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I would be so. I, I would be happy to do anything with Alan Tudyk. I would just like that man is just. He does yeah. not get the love he deserves. Alan Tudyk is amazing. He is, he is a, so freaking amazing. He is an Such angel. A talented man. Such a talented man. Yeah. It, it, by the way, guys, if you have not seen, uh, you know who Alan Tudyk is. If you have not seen Dollhouse and mm-hmm. see him in that as Alpha, he <laughs> does this flip of he become, goes from a goofball to a freaking dead-eyed killer yeah. in that show. Just like that. It's so good. Oh, he's so good. He so he's good. so great. David, thank you again. I don't know how we do that every time. We I don't know. We, we do this every time we go off on the tangents of other we things. Do, we like, do. Well, guys, what I love about I, I talking be... about my fellow geeks is just like we can just go on forever. It's truth. Well, I thank you so much. I you uh, deserve all the success, and I can't wait to talk to you again late soon about Terrifier Three and your next next endeavors. You were uh, you. you're great, man. Thank you. Thank you.